Okay, this is the practical. Uh, in the AQA required practicals, they call it the practical on acceleration. Now, from your work in, in lessons, you should be familiar with this equation, which is force equals mass times acceleration. And the equation is saying, if we try and just talk about it in how it would apply to things in real terms, for something to be accelerated, there's two things that are going to be involved in how much it's accelerated. And we've got the force and the mass. So in simple terms, if something's got a high mass, it might be harder to accelerate. If you use a lot of force, it's going to accelerate more. So we're doing an experiment on this equation, but of course we've got to be really careful because we're going to measure the acceleration, but we must make sure that we only change one of these things at a time. So one of these we must fix. So what we're going to do, we're going to do two practicals, and in the first instance, we're going to keep the mass the same, we're going to change the force, and we're going to measure the acceleration. So we need an experiment where we can measure acceleration and we can change force. And that's exactly what we've got in front of us. Okay? So that's where we're going with this. If we have a look at the equipment we've got, we're using light gates. So these, this is the first light gate and this is the second light gate. And these can measure how fast something moves between them. And the way they do that is the Thing that's moving blocks the light between the two sensors and as it blocks the light you tell the computer how wide the thing is that's blocking the light so you give the computer a distance and the computer then knows the time that the light is blocked for and using the equation that you've done in lesson speed equals distance times uh, distance divided by time you can work out or the computer can work out the speed here and then in this gate exactly the same, we can also work out a speed there. So we can work out two speeds. Now from the work that you've done, you know that acceleration is change in speed over time. So if we've got two speeds, we can work out the change in speed, because we've got a starting speed and an end speed, and we've called this speed at A and speed at B. So with those two speeds, we can work out a change in speed, but of course to work out an acceleration, we need a time that occurs between those two changes of speed. And that's exactly what the, the light gates can tell us as well, because they're connected to a, a sensor pack with an iPad, and that can tell us the time it takes for this car, or trolley as we call it, this trolley to move between that gate and that gate. So we've got all the equipment set up that we can measure acceleration. So that's the first part of this, is measuring the acceleration. But bear in mind what we said, we need to keep the mass constant but we now need to change the force. So how, how are we accelerating this? You can see the piece of string from the front of the car, there's a piece of string. It goes all the way over a pulley and then hanging from the pulley, we've got some mass. Now, because this mass is being acted on by gravity, it's being pulled down. So therefore this mass, we would, this is a force, it, it's got weight. And what we can do, we can change the force by adding on extra masses and if we add on extra masses that will increase the force but we have got to be very careful when we do this experiment because remember what I said at the start we need to keep the mass constant so in order to keep the mass constant what I can't do is just bring these masses in and not account for them these masses need to be in the system so these masses are going to start off their life over on this trolley Okay, so we're going to paste them there, and then the first time we do this, we will have 200 grams, or 0.2 kilograms, suspended on the pulley, and we're going to have 800 grams, or 0.8 kilograms, on the trolley. Now, to make the maths easy, the trolley itself, the car, is 1 kilogram. So if you do some quick maths, you've got 1 kilogram, 0.8 kilograms and 0.2 kilograms so the total mass in our system the mass that's being accelerated is 2 kilograms so that is not changing so when we increase the force if we want to increase the force what we're going to do is take two of these from here and we're going to quite simply move them around on here and we'll place them on the mass that's being pulled down and that's how we're going to increase our force because our force is the weight of this being pulled down by gravity. So we're going to do this five times and in each time we will, by keeping the mass the same we will just change the force. 
So we're keeping the mass the same, changing the force and measuring the acceleration between these two points. We'll have to do some work afterwards because the computer is going to tell us a speed, another speed and a time between them. But from that we will be able to do, uh, to calculate mass time, uh, calculate the acceleration afterwards. Okay, so we'll probably now try it, we'll do a few runs and then we'll come back with some results. Okay, one thing we didn't think about maybe, which we need to think about now, is that if we've got a 2 newtons force pulling this trolley forwards, we need to make sure that that, that force is actually 2 newtons forwards. But we have also got another force going on here, which we can demonstrate by if we just push this trolley, this car slightly, we can see that it doesn't keep going, it will eventually stop. So we have got friction. Now friction is preventing this trolley moving forwards, so it's in the opposite direction to the two newtons pulling it that way towards the end of the ramp. So our resultant force, if you've done resultant forces, they, that wouldn't equal two newtons. So what we've got to do, we've got to compensate for this. We've got to do something to try and, not sort of get rid of friction, but we've got to try and mean, make it so that friction doesn't affect our results. And the way we do that is we lift the ramp up slightly. So if we put a slight incline on the ramp so that when we do push this, it doesn't stop, it keeps on going, we hopefully can say that we have compensated for friction so that we know the resultant force in that direction will be two newtons for the first. So I'm just going to do that by if I put a couple of books under here. Okay, and then the way to test this is just to give it a little push and to see if it now goes much further, hopefully pretty much to the end of the ramp. Yep. Four newtons. Okay, and ten newtons. Okay, so here's our data uh, we've got from the experiment you'll have seen, the speed at A and the speed at B and the time that it took to get from A to B. And so the analysis of this is we need to work out the increase in the speed. So to get the increase in speed here, the 0 0.78, okay, what we've done is take the speed at B, take away the speed at A, that gives us an increase of speed of 0 0.78. We divide it by the time taken, so acceleration is increase in speed divided by time, and that gave us for 4 newtons, for example, we got 1.77 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Okay, we've then taken all this data and plotted it onto a graph over here. And you'll see we've got quite nice data in as much as the um, acceleration is proportional to the force. So we've got a straight line graph through the origin. And we can say the acceleration is proportional to the force applied. Okay, where our data maybe isn't quite so good is that we can actually work out from the equation, um, the other equation for calculating acceleration, is that it should be the force divided by the mass. So if I do 2 newtons divided by 2 kilograms, we should actually have got an acceleration for the first one of 1 meter per second squared, for the second one 4 divided by 2, 2 meters per second squared, and so on. So you'll see that although our data gave us quite a nice um, proportional relationship, which is what we're expecting, the numbers are a little bit lower than uh, the theoretical values, which suggest that maybe we uh, didn't quite compensate enough for friction, possibly. So in the first experiment, if you just think what we did, we kept the mass constant, I'll point to this a bit easier, we kept the mass constant and we changed the force, but we said at the start, now we need to do the other experiment, where we keep the force constant, I've changed the results table already, but we change the mass. So the accelerating masses, the weight, uh, which is our force, is going to be kept at 10 newtons, but we need to change the mass of the whole system. So if I come over here and just remind, we've got our trolley that's one kilogram. We've got one kilogram that's already here that's being uh, used as a force to accelerate. So what we're going to do in this experiment, each time we're going to add, we're going to make it so we have got two kilograms first, so that's just going to be the trolley and the masses and then we're going to add two kilograms onto the trolley so we'll do this okay and then we'll do four so this is a two so we'll go that's two four five we're now at six 
then we can do seven, eight, and then finally we'll do 10 kilograms. And we'll fill in these results here where we're changing the mass from two to 10, but we're keeping the force at 10 newtons throughout. So we'll do that now. Go on then. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so here's our data for changing the mass. Well, we keep the force the same. Okay, the calculations are the same. I've put another example on for you there, but it's the same principle of what we're doing. Here are our results. Uh, so we've got the acceleration here decreasing as the mass increases. Okay, and this gives us a graph which shows an inversely proportional relationship. Okay, so notice this is not a straight line, this is a curve. If I'm doubling the mass, I'm halving the acceleration. Okay, you'll notice our results again are a little bit low apart from this one, which is actually too high. But they do show a fairly clear inverse relationship as the mass increases, the acceleration decreases.